Most young people think that they have a lot of friends. But if you ask any old man or any old woman how many friends they have, usually they'll be very happy to say they have one. So one time there was a 20-year-old kid, came to his father, so happy in his life, he's 20, he's partying, he's this, he's that, and his dad asked him, listen, son, how many friends do you have? He goes, ah, dad, I have at least 100 friends. Goes, you have 100 friends? Yeah, I have 100 best friends. Everybody's my best friend, not just a friend, best. We go here, we go there, we go there, we go there. He goes, Abba, you must have a thousand, two thousand friends. He goes, no, I don't have. Because how many friends do you have, Abba? Half a friend. We mean half a friend. He goes, Abba, half a friend. That's it? What, everybody doesn't like you? He goes, no, 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 I only have a half a friend. He goes, wow. He goes, no, Abba says, uh, you shouldn't feel bad for me. Should we feel bad for you? He goes, why? Because I have more friends than you. He goes, wait a minute, I just told you I have a hundred friends. He goes, you don't have any friends. I have a half a friend, you have nothing. So how do you know I have no friends? I just told you I have a hundred. I'll prove it to you. Go take a sheep, slaughter it, put it in a garbage bag, and knock on every one of your friend's uh, doors and tell them, listen, there's a dead body, I just killed somebody by accident. Help me out. And see what they say to you. So the kid says, okay, why not? Knocks on the first door, says, listen, there's blood everywhere, on him, on his shirt, everywhere. It looks like real. Yo, listen, I just killed this guy. You got to help me out. Hey, 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 get out of here. Close the door right in his face. Second door, in his face. Third door, fourth door, fifth. Everybody closes the door. Eventually, after the 50th door, he goes, hey, hey, hey. Like, what? What did you do? He goes, look, come on. We went on vacation last month. He goes, well, okay, we're on vacation. So what? I'm going to put my life in danger for you. You're the murderer, you're the problem. Get out of here, I'm not gonna put my life on the line for you. Close the door. Next one says, so what we went to the Bahamas together? So what we went to school together? So what you lend me $5,000? So what? I'm gonna go to jail for you? Why? Why am I gonna go to Ganon for you? Because you lent me a few dollars? Because you gave me a ride to the hospital? So what? Everybody out of the whole hundred closes their door in his face. And he goes with his head down back to his father. He's like, Abba, you're right. I don't even have one friend. But who's this half a friend of yours? He goes, yeah, yeah. Before you change your clothes, go to my friend. Go to my half a friend. Tell him the same thing. It's the middle of the night. He knocks on his guy's door. Two o'clock in the morning. Hey, listen, I'm David's son. I murdered this guy. I need your help. He goes, come in, come in, come in. And as soon as he comes in, starts giving him a towel to wipe himself. What happened? Listen, don't worry. Everything's going to be fine. He's like, ah, oh, listen, it's not real. Actually, it's just a sheep. But thanks a lot for being a friend. And he goes back to his dad and he says, How'd you know that he's going to do it? How'd you know he's going to save me? Yeah, that's, that's what a half a friend is there for. He goes, what do you mean? Why do you keep calling him a half a friend? A guy like that, he's more than one friend. He's one and a half. He goes, no, he's only half. He goes, why is he only half? He said, he's only half because you still weren't in 100% danger. You weren't caught yet. You just committed the murder. So you always know that you could possibly, he could help you get away with it. If you were already, the cops were already catching you, probably wouldn't open the door.
That's why he's a half a friend. You weren't in 100% danger yet. You are in some danger. Safik. Maybe danger. Maybe we can get away from him. Maybe we can hide the body in the basement. Throw him in the ocean. No one knows yet. Only you. Because Abba. Is this just a thing as a real friend? Because yeah, there is. Because who is a real friend? Because I know somebody that used to have a real friend. Because many years ago, there was one guy, a Jew. You know, they, anytime the Goyim get bored, they blame the Jews for something. So they blamed this Jew for stealing. You know, in, the, in those days, Jew that stole, Gzardin Mavit, death penalty. King decreed, Jew stole, death penalty. You don't even have to prove it, no evidence, no nothing. You say he stole, it's a death. So the Jew says, okay, listen, I understand I can't get away or anything like that. I understand. You guys want to kill me. What can I do? Can you at least give me just a day to go say goodbye to my family? One day. He goes, well, one day, we're going to let you go, you're not going to come back. He goes, no, 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 I'll give you collateral. What collateral are you going to give us? My friend, who's also a Jew. You guys really just want to kill Jews. It's not really, not because you just want to kill me. Somebody else, you kill him too. So I'm going to give you another Jew, my friend, my best friend. I'm going to give you, and obviously I'm going to come back. Or you get to kill him anyway. Either way, you win. He goes, okay, fine, no problem. His friend comes in, he's collateral, sits in the cell. So if you're not back on Tuesday, 2 o'clock, I'd say we're killing your friend. No problem. Tuesday at 1.55. Said he's not back yet. Okay, let's go. The friend goes. They put the rope on his neck. And all of a sudden, they hear the guy scream, No! I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. It's like, yeah, but you were late. Okay, oh, I'm sorry, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. You can't deny that I'm here. Okay, no, come on. Yalla, we're going to kill you instead. And the friend says, no, no. He puts the rope back on his head. He goes, no, no, no. He's late. He's late. Send him home. Kill me. He goes, no, Mappy Tom. I'm the, one that's, I'm the one that stole. Kill me. He goes, no, but he's late. He made a deal with you guys. You guys can't go against your own deal. It's your law. You can't go against the deal. So they're fighting. Who are they going to kill now? And the king hears this commotion. He goes, what are these two crazy Jews doing? Because they're fighting about who are you going to kill? Your Honor. He goes, what do you mean they're fighting who you're going to kill? He goes, this guy says kill him. The other guy says kill him. He goes, what, they want to kill each other? He goes, no, 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 they want to kill themselves. So he goes, bring them over here. He says, why are you guys fighting? He goes, listen. He said he's going to come back. He didn't come back. I want you to kill me. That's your deal. He goes, yeah, but I'm the one that stole. He goes, why do you guys want to kill yourselves for? He goes, let me tell you the truth, Your Honor. See him? He's my best friend. My best friend. And I can't live without him. So I'd rather die first. And the other guy says, Tiana, him is my best friend. He's my chavuta. Can't live without him. So I'd rather die first. So the king says, I can get you both off, but under only one condition. I said, yeah. Make me the third friend. Once in a while you're going to find a friend. But in reality, most friends you keep them at a distance. It's convenient relationships. You have money. You have looks. You have job offerings. All different types of things. Now, Ban Gamliel says, befriend people, but know that they're your friends for a reason. They want something from you most of the time. They're not going to open a door at 1.30 in the morning to save you. They're not going to be there even if they have 100, 200, 300 million dollars. They're not going to lend you 100 dollars. I'm telling you, me, personally, based on experience. When I had money, people would throw money at me. Throw money. They would want to give me money. I didn't need money. But they want to throw money at me. All of a sudden, get into a jam. I'm busy. I'm this. I'm that. I'm not one to ask for help. But one time, I actually tried to see if maybe I could get help on this thing I was trying to do. I call a guy. At least he has 150, 200 million dollars. At least. We used to do deals. Each deal was a million dollars, minimum. Million, two million, three million. Made a lot of money for him. Ask him for a deal, 
I think it was maybe, I don't know, $100,000. Meaning it's like a day's pay. Nothing. Nah, you know, I'm just too busy. What too busy? To, to, to tell your assistant to send me $100,000? What too busy? Nah, it's just going to mess me up. You know, nah, it's not my... All of a sudden, he's... This is not even a rounding error. It's not even a rounding error for what he has. And he's not the one, and two, and three, and every single person that I called. I tried to save my house. All of a sudden, no, 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 I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do I'm like, yeah, but I'll pay you for it. You're going to get 100% on your money. You give me the money, I'll pay you in two years. When I sell the house, 100% profit. No, it's this. It's all of a sudden, nobody has. Nobody has time. Nobody has patience. Nobody has this. Nobody has that. Nothing. All doors closed. Why? Because that's life. It's already in the Torah. It's not new. There's nothing new under the sun. But you're only going to find out who your friends are when you really don't have any friends. Because the only time you're ever going to need them is when they tell you who they really are. So don't spend so much time thinking that you have these dear relationships. Because in reality, most people have relationships based on convenience, based on benefits, and things of that nature. And unfortunately, sometimes it's even worse. Sometimes some people that don't have Yirat Shamayim they act like some of these older friends that I had, they used to work for me. We were best friends. They came to me with nothing, all of a sudden they have something. King started making some decent money, all of a sudden they became wolves. You know why wolves? Why am I saying wolves? Because wolves have a nature in them that if one of the wolves, it's a wolf pack, you know, wolves don't go alone, they have a bunch of friends. Yeah. But as soon as one of them gets weak, what happens? Where did they go bring them a... Uh, some help, some doctors, they bring him as a fruit tree, bring him a drink. No, what do they do? They eat him. Yeah, you're too weak for us. You're too weak for the pack. They eat the wolf. Sometimes people act like wolves. Sometimes the wolves are actually better than the people. Because at least they wait until he's really weak. And that's what happens. This is reality. Who do you invest in? Invest in your neshama. Invest in your family. Invest in your own home. Everyone else, yeah, if it happens, it happens. It doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Don't be like this 20-year-old kid that thinks he had 100 friends. You don't have 100 friends. 